What's going on? You're in the Beat Sessions. I'm your host, Mitchell Weary. Let's talk about Death Cab for Cutie and their new record, Asphalt Meadows. That was released on September 16th. This is studio album number 10 for the band and their follow-up to 2018's Thank You For Today. And I love the album title. The imagery that those two words conjure up together is absolutely outstanding. Going to give you a pretty good idea of what you can expect on this record as well. It's nice to have Ben Gibbard and company back, even without Chris Walla bringing a heavier feel to that signature Death Cab for Cutie sound, both lyrically and musically. I'm going to argue for that reason that this little change of pace makes this their best record in at least a decade. I'm having a ton of fun with this album. And this is a band that has meant a lot to me over the years. I grew up with these guys. We have the facts and we're voting yes. Came out my sophomore year of high school, Transatlanticism, my sophomore year of college. Those are two records that got a lot of rotation on the turntable while I was still living with people, going to school in my 20s. But it's it's pretty easy to see when you think about Ben's writing style, the romanticism that's there, the the nostalgia, the the hopefulness of youth, and and all of these things that you know as as a young twenty something, it's pretty easy to attach yourself to that. And you know musically, the man is pretty solid as well. I've always enjoyed this band when they get more into their moody and experimental style. The uh, you know the upbeat pop stuff is good, but I, I like these guys when when they tend to be not emo necessarily. They've been They've been described as emo music for a number of years by a lot of people, and I, I don't agree with that. I think it's a disservice. I think that that is a specific genre of music that these guys don't fall into. There might be some influences there, but I would not classify these guys as emo music. I will say, though, that as I grew up, I, I just sort of drifted away from this band. And I think a lot of people that I know did, and I'd argue that the reason for it is that Ben, it, it felt like he just kind of got stuck in a bit of a rut lyrically. And those, you know, those ideas, that romanticism, so to speak, just doesn't resonate you as you grow older, as life hits you in the face a little harder. And as you realize that it's just not realistic, it's just not what real life is like. And so, you know, the other thing about that too is, you know, someone who's going to continue to just kind of do the same thing. It's like reading your favorite poetry by you know by a writer that you really like. You go back and maybe you you dig into the stuff that you appreciate that that over the years has just it's just hit you harder maybe than some of the newer material that that individual was coming out. So I'm always going to go back to those older records, and I have I really haven't dug into a lot of their new material. I've listened to it briefly, but just wasn't struck by it. Asphalt Meadows, though, this record, it, it, <laughs> we have a new man in Ben Gibbard. And where lyrically, I feel like there was that push of, of youth and hope and, and you know, the, the heartache and, and all that stuff that goes along with it. I feel like now Ben in middle age has reached a different, different space where, you know, he's acknowledged that life is hard. It is tough. And there's good and bad that goes along with all of it. And in order to live a healthy life and to be happy, you need to... You need to develop coping mechanisms and you need to find balance. It's going to be hard. There's no way around it. And there's, I mean, you look at some of the lyrics. I'll pull some of them up here in a second when we get into the track list. But there's, I mean, there's some brutal imagery and some just very honest moments that you just, you didn't quite get anything like this in previous Death Cab records. So I love his perspective. I love where Ben is at as a writer these days. Not in a dark place by any means, but I think just being more realistic in the way that that he approaches subject matter. Uh, I also love the just the variety of music. Again, that signature Death Cab sound is there, but a lot of 80s, new wave, post-punk working on this thing. There's some fun synths that are at work, some great Americana moments. This is, this is an album that has great continuity that's playing around with a lot, so I really dig it for that reason as well. The compositions themselves have unique structure. There's there's some spots where I was I was really struck by what happened musically uh, in a particular song, especially the opener. I don't know how I survive. There's uh, it, it starts off with just this great mellow feel. It's got this poppy riff that, you know, this is the style of, of Death Cab that I'm not necessarily crazy about, but you get that, that lighthearted riff balanced with the lyrics of, you know, I'll pull these up here for you right now. It's um, this is a pretty intense moment, a pretty intense way to just kick this record off, but listen to the ringing in your ears, the scrambled voices of your fears, whispering, whispering, listen to the sound of your heartbeat growing louder, gaining speed. You're breathing out, breathing in, in these nights, I don't know how I survive. And this thing goes on. It's, I mean, it really sets the the tone and the pace 
for for a record that is exploring a post COVID world without dwelling on it. It's it's certainly written in a way that we, we talk about this on the channel quite a bit. But these albums, that this album and these songs are going to age well. These these lyrics are written in a way that you know they they certainly apply to the last few years, but they also can apply to so much in life. In my experience, even going back to my earlier twenties, even when some of that other stuff that they were writing me was was hitting me harder, I I reflect on. On, on my youth and my 20s and uh you know there's a lot here that that i really appreciate and i i think would have appreciated more maybe at that age too so it's just it's just a, a different contrast is i i guess I'm, what i'm trying to say is that you know if you grew up with ben like he's there with all of us now and it's just nice to to be back on the same page with him musically and more importantly lyrically as a songwriter but the uh the hook on this opening track is great it's uh, i really like the heavy moments when they come in it's a fun element of the track and a pretty solid way to kick this thing off roman candles is your second song wasn't super crazy about this track it's got these pulsating synths uh, and vocal in the intro this big electro rock feel almost industrial textures on this song uh really short it's um it's not that it's bad necessarily but it just didn't catch me uh, the way that the rest of this record did the rest of that, the, the remaining nine songs on this album are quite remarkable. This was a moment that I felt a little nervous. I wasn't really sure, but then the title track asphalt meadows hits, and this is, uh, just, uh, you know, I'll pull up some more lyrics here too, cause another great moment, but I like the way that this mellows things out. It's going to pull back off of Roman candles. The drums are really prominent in the song, really nice, gentle reverb in the piano on this thing. I like the build and the drive of this particular song, but you know, you pull it up and, um, I just, I love this line right here. Uh, find it here, here in the asphalt meadows. There's only one thing that grows, finding the life through the concrete, getting trampled under our feet. They all lead to an airport, planes drifting off into the sky, always depart, but never seem to arrive. And there in the early hour, lying naked in your unmade bed, I was thinking of how to tell you what my ticket read. This thing is, I mean, he's, uh, there's, there's been there. You can definitely feel that in the lyrics, but he's just going to some darker places that I, I feel are going to resonate with more people. A lot of us have been there in the last few years, and I think we're going to identify with Ben so much more on this record. At least I did anyway. That's why I'm feeling the power of this thing. Rand McNally is your fourth track. This is a, a highlight for sure. You got this arpeggiated riff with this light atmospheric uh, synth to open this thing up. The beat kicks in. Um, and I just, I like, I love, I just, I, I love the like gentle bit of funk that's driving this track. But this is, this is the type of song that I really like from this band. And this was the, the first moment on the record that, that I really, truly 100% was just in love with. And I'm in love with the rest. The back end of this record is amazing. Here to Forever is definitely my favorite song. I love the solid 80s feel of this. Just great new wave uh, in the drive on this thing. But it's uh, got a great alternative rock presence, heavy bass. The chorus brightens up. It's got an excellent hook. This song is... This is... This is a perfect example of the the ongoing evolution of this band, a band that has established its style, but is always going to set out to do something unique and different with every new project. And this this song is a shining example of that. Love here to forever. Foxglove through the clear cut is your sixth track. Love the the slow build and the Americana feel on this track. It's got a good indie Americana balance. This is a fun song. It's got this spoken word element to it. There's a story in it. Uh, the chorus is going to fill out uh, musically, and then the the chorus is sung as well. Big rock and coda to finish this thing. Very experimental. It's a, it's a fun track. This that that stretch of tracks. Rand McNally here to forever and Foxglove is a is a really fun experience probably one of the best things that you've heard from death cab in a very long time pepper your seventh song has got this acoustic vocal intro that you know really is going to carry throughout the song and that's dominated there but i like the the light production on the instrumentation as it comes in and then that fills out um you just get great bass tone on this particular song super super fun and catchy track i i'm really a, a big fan of the synth hook on that particular song i miss strangers your eighth song it, this kicks right in it's it's uh, it's uh, pretty hard not to dig the guitars on this thing. They are absolutely outstanding. The way that they play off each other is magnificent. You get this dark, moody feel in this song. The the breakdown is going to mellow and slow this track up, uh, but then they rip right back into it. And this is another song. Like I'll just uh, I'll go ahead and pull up the lyric on this thing. You were by my side on the front line. Do you remember? Do you remember casualties of the punk wars buried in leather? In leather. 
These days I miss strangers more than I, more than I miss my friends. Waves of conversations break in on shores of my head again. Just some great, some great place that, uh, that he's in there. I'm, I'm loving the lyrics on this album. Definitely the, the highlight for, for all the good things that are happening. Wheat Like Waves is your ninth song. It's a well executed rock and roll song. There's just great guitar play once again on this thing. Solid drums. Love the simple but groovy bass element that's there. The vocal melodies are, are definitely a highlight on this particular song. Uh, pretty piano this the like synth that comes in really reminds me a lot of the alternative british rock scene in the early 2000s it's really cool tapping back into that fragments from the decade your penultimate track loose at atmospheric guitars i really love the synth and vocal this this kind of surprised me for a penultimate track i wasn't sure what to expect but it's uh just very loose very ambient got that uh, a little bit of that signature uh, james wilsey guitar tone Chris Isaac, if you're familiar with him, he's uh, he's the one who helped establish that killer guitar tone that we all know from Wicked Games. That's uh, you know just gone on to to be a highlight of the music industry for the last 30 years, in my opinion, 35 years now. It's crazy how long that song's been around. I'll never give up on you is your final track though. Big drums, big fuzzy guitars, more rock and energy. I kind of expected this kind of feel from the uh, from the previous track, but eh, just mixing it up a little bit, keeping you on your toes, which I like. And the uh, the notes on the piano on this thing are absolutely stellar. This uh, this song this sounded like this song honestly sounded like what I wanted to hear from Muse on their new record. And I think that this one particular track is a uh, is a great example of of Death Cab moving into some different terrain and messing around with some different stuff, but also lyrically hitting the nail on the head where. A band like Muse, I feel like with their most recent record, just didn't didn't do that lyrically. I felt like those lyrics were very general and generic, and just didn't they just didn't strike me. I just I, they felt like they were just written to serve mass appeal. Versus Ben is Ben is going to some hard places with this record, and I love the way that he's navigated that, and the way that this band has come out on the other side. This is a vinyl please for sure. This record surprised me. I'm really pumped to. To be getting back into Death Cab, like I said, there was a there was about a decade there where those records just uh, you know while I listened to them and they were good, they just didn't impress me the way that their early work did. I'm impressed by this album, and I hope you are as well. Please enjoy this record. Hope you find this review helpful as well. Like this video, share it, subscribe to the channel, do all the things to help me blow this project up in 2022, and stay tuned throughout the week for more album reviews. We'll see you next time on the Beat Sessions.